not too bad. Oh, shut up. Ugh. Well, welcome this morning. I'm in my backyard and I decided to do a little bit of practice. One of the things that Brian discovered, remember from the first story, Hatchet, he made a bow and arrow. Now this bow was good enough to shoot, you know, the rough grouse or ptarmigan in snowshoe hair. But something happened. Remember reading chapter two of of the new book that we're reading the new novel okay brian's winter brian's winter is a, a continuation someone asked gary paulson what if brian hadn't been rescued what would happen and brian and gary paulson came up with the idea of writing brian's winter as a response to that in other words what would happen to brian say the radio transmitter didn't work and he was going to have to face the reality of maybe living through a cold, hard Canadian winter. Okay, And as I have said before, a lot of times winter, that when we think of winter, we don't think of, you know, like I know a lot of people think it's cold and snowy, but in, in that part of Canada, it's a lot more, there's a greater amount of cold and a greater amount of snow. So he's going to be in for a really rough time. Now, one of the things he do, that we know of is in chapter two, he had a little run in with a big black bear. The black bear was attracted to the, the smells of the food in and around the camp. So, you know, bears, you know, they, they, they look for food. That's why out in the countryside where there are bears, a lot of people have trouble with their garbage being broken into and have, and especially bird feeders tend to get knocked over because that's seen as a free food source. Bears will pretty much eat anything they can. They're actually more omnivores than carnivores. You know, TV portrayed them as being like these, you know, mar marauders, de uh, demons or whatever, going out eating people up, but it's not necessarily the case. Okay. Now, Brian made a bow, but he realized something. At, at the start of chapter three, he wanted to make a stronger bow called a war bow. Now, when we think of archery, what do you think of? Okay. As you could see, I did a little bit of practice in my backyard with a, a bow that I have. All right. I've had it for many years. This here's my... <clears throat> A lot of times when we think of archery, we may think of something like this. This here is a modern compound bow. This is a guard, you know, this is actually a little outdated, believe it or not. But this is a Bowtech Guardian. It's a compound bow. It has wheels on the end. Actually, they're called the centric cams. And what it does is that when you pull the bow back, uh, it has what is called let off. In other words, this bow is set at about 70 pounds. So when I pull it back, the bow is going to be at about 70 pounds, but then it breaks over to where I'm only holding about, you know, 15 or 20 percent of that weight. So that at a certain point, I can I'm not holding 70 pounds of pressure. I'm actually only holding about 15 pounds of pressure. So I could hold the bow at my anchor point for a lot longer of a period of time. So it's a lot easier to shoot. Plus, it's you know, this bow here is very different than, you know, like when you think of a bow, a lot of times people think of, you know, like a carved stick bent with a string. Okay. This has a, this has a front sight. It also has a peep sight that I peer through and I use this to align myself with the target. It has a modern flipper rest that drops away when the arrow is released. And this type of bow here, you know, you can't pull it back with fingers. You have to have a trigger shooting release. It just will not work because the distance between the top and bottom, it's called axle length, is too short. The angle of the string would be much, much too narrow for human fingers to pull back and release. So you use, you know, it has a, has a string loop. And again, you use this thing called a trigger release. 
or a mechanical release. There's no other way to shoot it. So it's really like the, there's a lot of technology involved. You know, the, the riser portion here is made out of machined aluminum. And these portions here, these are carbon fiber uh, limbs. And, you know, it's really a high-tech tool, okay? You know, the arrows that I shoot, I just shot in a foam target, but they're carbon fiber arrows. They're made by Easton, and they have a metal, metal tip that's tapered so they can pull it out of the target easier. You know, it's got, you know, plastic knots, which, uh, if you look at closely, are designed to hug around the string. It's got short, you know, short plastic or they're kind of like a vinyl vein, so they're waterproof, you know. Um, when it comes to hunting, now that's a different story, all right. I use the same arrow for hunting, except you notice that these knocks or the ends where the, where the arrow attaches to the string, they're clear. Well, they actually have like a little tiny light in it, so when the arrow is released, it's almost like a tracer and the arrow can be seen as it goes through its flight and now in the uh you know now more you know for the point this here is a slick trick broadhead it's you know one and a quarter inches in diameter it's got four razor sharp surgical steel cutting blades and that's utilized for um hunting i've killed i've killed a few deer and turkey with this particular bow and arrow and it's very effective and it's very accurate i can basically hit you know, like a two inch circle at about 40 yards. If I really do, you know, try on my behalf, if I really concentrate, okay. Uh, hunting wise, I won't shoot anything more than 30 yards. And most of the time I'm up in a tree stand anyways, but that's neither here nor now, or now, either there, you know, here or, or now, okay. Brian doesn't have this technology. Again, when we think of archery, what do we think of? I like to think that in this day and age, most of the time we think of um, this modern bow or something similar to it, okay? Bow, you know, archery and bow hunting in the United States is very popular. It's also popular in Canada and some other parts of the world, okay? But it is, you know, it is very, in this day and age today, it's very high tech. There, originally it wasn't so. The story of archery goes back at least 40, maybe 50,000 years in history. And we know that because now we don't have any surviving bows or arrows from that time, obviously, but we do have the arrow heads. And archaeologists figured out uh, by dating them that arrowheads have been dated back to about 40 to 50,000 years BC. So we're talking about a significant amount of time when humanity discovered by taking a stick and not just an ordinary stick it has to be a certain type of wood has to be carved and bending it in a, in a manner with a string of some sort and able to launch an arrow and that was a game changer for civilization that was a point when humanity was able to you know for a lack of a better term and i know the social justice warriors are going to get upset when humanity was able to dominate the environment because now it created a weapon that could be used at long range to take down even the biggest animals on earth, okay? And it also changed the, name, the game of warfare. Humanity, for good or for bad, for thousands of years have fought battles, not just with swords and knives and spears, but with archery. In fact, the greatest loss of life even to this day in one battle was the battle of Crecy um, in France when the Brit when England basically invaded uh, France and engaged in a battle where over 20,000 French troops were killed by archery they just waylaid the daylights out of them with arrows upon arrows upon arrows you know um if you think about that, and I know this is kind of like a painful thing, that's almost four times the amount of deaths in Afghanistan and overseas in the last 20 years. You know, something to think about, something to think about. In one three-day battle or so, you know, 20,000 soldiers are killed by archery, okay? You know, 
an arrow takes out them takes them out so getting back to archery all right brian has a problem in our in our uh in our archery situation here he's got a bow but it's not strong enough we, we can kind of guess that it has maybe like a 20 pound pole now across the united states for the most part fishing game departments have established rules if you want to hunt with a bow and arrow for deer or turkey generally speaking the bow has to be 40 pounds with a 28 inch arrow and usually in most states it has to be a metal tipped broadhead of su such a such diameter in that it's kept sharp okay well brian is in a situation where he doesn't have that and he has to figure out a way to create what he calls his war bow now got some questions for you do you think this is going to be an easy task for him he has to find a piece of wood cut it and shape it in a bow now this is not as easy as it seems and it's actually given me an idea i'm actually thinking about finding a piece of wood and trying to carve with just a hatchet and knife a simple quote war bow as brian did so we're going to need to make a bow that has at least a 40 pound pull to humanely harvest big game because where brian is he's got mostly small game but he wants something for bet more protection because he realizes that you know there are bears for the most part they leave you alone but they don't always follow the rules you know they bears kind of do what they want in fact, uh, a couple of weeks ago, I got a younger friend of mine who went hiking, and he was actually attacked by a black bear up in New Hampshire. He wasn't hurt, but basically the bear was threatening him because some fool was giving the bear food. So, and hence, the bear learned people equal food. So now the fishing game is probably going to have to go up there and either trap it or kill it. Okay, thanks to somebody who thought it would be cute to feed a bear. That's a lesson for everybody. Okay, a fed bear is a dead bear, but back to archery. Brian is going to figure out how to make what he calls his war bow. And to do that, it, it's, it's not as easy as it seems, or at least, you know, the book, uh, you know, the novel, it's really entertaining. But it's, it's going to be a little bit more difficult. He's going to have to find a straight limb of some hardwood. Now, it can't be a softwood. Softwoods generally all are all your pines and spruces. Anything, with the exception of some stuff, anything that you see with foliage in the wintertime is considered a softwood. With the exception of some things like, like um, some when I was a kid, we used to call them banana trees, but it's actually a catalpa tree. It has this long, skinny, bean-like seed pod or any any member of the poplar or cottonwood family even though they're technically hardwood they're actually soft so brian is gonna have to make a bow out of some type of hardwood something like maple or hickory but i don't think hickory grows that far north so he's gonna have to find uh something maybe even birch birch is a hardwood but it, it's not as it's not as great for bow making as say you know a, a piece of hickory he might have to resort to maple maple could probably work out but he's going to have an undertaking on his hands regarding this particular uh endeavor he's going to have to figure out how to make a bow that's powerful enough for what he feels he he needs protection and then that's only the other uh the other half of it a bow is only, a bow is great you can make one but he's going to need a string he's going to need a string that's going to be strong strong enough to hold that curved arc and he's going to have to make arrows like i said i've got carbon fiber arrows these are actually these things are actually quite expensive you know a dozen of these arrows is over 100 bucks it's probably like about 150 dollars for a dozen arrows and then if you add on the tips, each tip is like, you know, around $5. You know, it, high tech has its price, if you know what I mean. All right, so Brian is going to have to figure out a way to make an arrow that's suitable for hunting big game. And that includes the point, okay? Now, I showed you the point on 
Uh, my hunting arrows, those are modern machine made steel heads with razor sharp blades. The blades can actually be taken out and put, you have new ones in. So say you shoot something like a deer, you can, re, you can actually reuse the head. I've done it before. Works perfectly fine. But Brian is going to have to figure out what is he going to use for, for an arrowhead? What is he going to use? He's going to have to make something that is going to cut flesh because that's the way a arrow works. An arrow works by hemorrhage. An arrow cuts through the body, severs veins and arteries, and the creature bleeds out. With a firearm, it uses, you know, it uses bleeding, but it also uses shock. There's a large amount of shock, like a big hammer hitting the creature. So Brian is going to figure out what does he have to make an effective broadhead or arrowhead. Technically, the term is broadhead because that's what they are. They're, they're wide and razor sharp. So he's going to have to find something that may actually work as an arrowhead. I don't know. Does he know what to do? 